Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking about how to fish a zoom super fluke. This is one of my favorite baits to throw, especially around the spawn, pre-spawn, spawn, and even post-spawn. This is a very good bait to fish, as well as in the fall or anytime you have like schooling fish or top water. It's just a very good bait to throw. This is one of the first baits I ever started throwing. Um, if you fish ponds, it works exceptionally well in ponds as well too. Um, so we're going to run through everything you need to know about how to fish a fluke. We're going to talk about gear. We're going to talk about the colors and stuff like that that you need to know. And I'm going to talk about three different ways to rig a fluke. Then we're going to go out on the water and show you what to throw it around and how to fish it. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm, giving, I'm going to be giving you a ton of tips all about the Zoom Super Fluke, everything I know, and even some tips on how to buy them in bulk and save a bunch of money if you really like fishing this bait. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead down below and hit the subscribe button for me. It would help me out a ton and you won't miss any more of my fishing videos. I put new videos out every Monday and Thursday from fishing tips just like these to tournament footage following along with all my tournaments throughout the season. So if you're interested in seeing any of that, hit that subscribe button down below for me. So there's actually two approaches you can take when fishing a fluke, and I use both of them. I'm gonna explain when and why you wanna use each one uh, and how you need to uh, utilize each one. The first one I'm gonna talk about and the one I probably use the most is going to be a spinning rod because this is a weightless soft plastic most of the time. Um, you're gonna need something that can cast really far. So I use a weightless or just a regular spinning rod, a seven foot medium action with a fast tip. Works perfect for these baits. Usually you'll get a pretty good hook in the fish with this rod. It has enough backbone to get it in there without it being too light. And that fast tip will give it the nice action that you need it. I use just a regular, this is a 2500 Shimano Sedona spinning reel. I put 15 pound braid on as my main line to get a really far cast and to get some extra sensitivity. And then on the end, I'll put a fluorocarbon leader. Um, the lowest I'll go is usually eight pound test. Sometimes if I'm fishing around docks and stuff like that, and I want a little bit more abrasion resistance, but still want to throw the spinning rod, I'll go to 10 or even 12 pound test fluorocarbon. Um, but for the most part, I'm fishing eight pound. So that's going to be the first setup. If you want to fish with a fluke, um, you can throw it on a spinning rod just like this. So the next setup here, this is gonna be more for when you're fishing around some bigger fish, around some heavier cover, which is the number one time I'm gonna choose this one. And most importantly, one of the rigs we're gonna talk about later, I will only throw on this setup. Um, this is just a seven foot medium heavy bait casting rod. And I use a six or seven one to one gear ratio. I prefer the seven, but you can go with a six if you want to. Um, a lot of times these fish will eat it and come right at you just like any other soft plastic and a lot of times you have to pick up a lot of slack. So I like the seven one to one if I can get away with it. And then for line, I'm gonna go up to a 12 pound fluorocarbon or even a 15 for my main line. Um, you don't wanna go much heavier than that. You'll actually start killing the action of your bait. The lighter the line you can use, the better dart you're gonna get out of it and more bites you're gonna end up getting. Okay, for the sake of time in this video, I'm only gonna talk about three rigs. They're gonna be the ones I use the most. If you'd like to see a video on every rig you can rig on a fluke, I'll show you some other secret ones that I use here and there very, very rarely. Um, leave a comment down below and I'll make that video. The first one and probably the most popular one is the Texas rig. So the Texas rig is super simple. Um, I just use a 3 aught Gamagatsu super line hook right there. Um, you can use up to a 5 aught. I've done it before and a lot of times you'll actually hook fish better with a 5 aught. The bigger the hook you go with, the less action you're going to get. So I tend to start with the 3 aught and if I can see they're short striking it, I might go up to the 5 aught. Um, simple Texas rig, just like any bait, come down through the head, pop it out through the nose, come down and around, spin it through like that, and then just come up through the belly. Standard Texas rig like you would do with any other bait, as you can see there weedless and has no weight. That's the key. You want no weight with this. It's going to give it the best action. Um, the problem is that it'll start to skip up out of the water like a top water um, and it doesn't stay down very well. So you're only going to be able to fish this in like five foot or less of water. You're, unless you're on like Lake Hartwell or something like that where the fish sit over 40 foot of water but feed up into one foot of water, you're not gonna be able to use this deeper than about five foot of water. So you're gonna fish this up shallow around the bank. That's why it works so well in ponds. Um, but this is probably the most popular way to rig a fluke and it's the one that I do most often. And it's probably the one we'll do later in today's video when we actually get out there and fish with it. Um, super effective around grass, rocks, 
wood, anything, just because you can't get it hung up. So the next way to fish this, which is gonna be that way to get around losing fish on the Texas rig like I just talked about, you're always gonna to wanna to fish this on a spinning rod. It's gonna give your bait a little bit different action than it usually would with the Texas rigged hook in it because it's not gonna have equally distributed weight through the bait, but it'll still have the right action and you'll still catch fish. Uh, you're gonna need three components for this rig. You're gonna need your fluke. You're gonna need a size one to one aught uh, wacky rig or drop shot hook, whatever you like to use, something with a wide gap in it. Um, and it has an open hook point, not something that's weedless or anything like that. And then lastly, I don't know how well my camera is gonna pick this up here. You're gonna need a screw lock. Um, they call them hitchhikers, screw locks, whatever. And you can see the key here is going to be to have that open loop there at the very top. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take this hitchhiker and you're gonna twist it into the nose of the bait like this. Uh, you can see that's the nose. We're going to twist it in all the way. So go as far up the, the screw lock as you can get until it's literally inside the nose of the bait. Like if this was on a swim bait hook or something like that, where it would be, you can see that that screw lock is in there. Um, it is all the way in and you want to make sure where that open loop is, you want it flat with the nose of the bait like this. You don't want the open loop like up and down like this, you want it flat. And I'll show you why right here, This'll, this is how it'll make sense. You're gonna take your drop shot hook, you're gonna come up through the bottom of the bait and out the top, just like that, almost like you're drop shot rigging it, except that hitchhiker is in the head of the bait. So when you're twitching it, it will not come off. You can't rip this bait off but it will give you an open hook point on the front of this bait. So what's that gonna do is when you skip this around docks or even open water fish or anything like that, they're usually gonna eat this bait head first. When they eat it head first like that, they will always have that open hook point. You will get penetration every time. You don't have to go through plastic. And the last rig we're gonna talk about, which is one that I very, this is probably the one I use the least out of the three, but it works very well when you wanna get it deeper in the water or when you wanna fish this faster. A lot of times you can actually throw this fluke out there on this rig and pull it with a long sweep. And instead of getting a darting action, you're gonna get a tail wiggle and it's gonna swim almost like a swim bait. Um, it, it's a different look that you can use sometimes. Or like I said, if you're fishing eight to 10 foot of water, you can get a fluke down much deeper with this technique and that's gonna be going to a weighted EWG hook, just like that. Um, usually the lighter the weight, the better. Um, if you fish it with a very, very light weight, you can still fish it up shallow and get the action that you need and actually keep it from blowing out of the water like we talked about earlier on the, the unweighted Texas rig. Um, this is gonna be rigged just like the hitchhiker method where you're gonna screw lock the front on, get it parallel with the eye of the hook so it lays just like that and then all you're gonna do is Texas rig it like you would with any other hook. And there you go. So you have a weighted fluke now, so you can fish this bait deeper than you could before. It'll fall horizontal like this, maybe a little bit nose down, and then it'll have it a different action because it'll dart upward when you pull it and then sink back down, gives it a different action. Or like I said, you can pull it through the water and it'll get this tail moving almost like a swim bait. If you're fishing with a fluke, you need like two main colors. You need a, maybe three. You need a white. White is like the number one color. Anytime you're fishing around bait fish, this imitates them so well. So like I said, white, white and silver, white and blue, any color that you want that's white with some type of glitter, you want a solid white one. Um, one that I fish pretty often is actually like a natural shad. If you have some clear water, um, this one's called albino. It works pretty well on clearer water. Um, any type of natural shad, translucent bait, um, they make like disco green and disco purple, I think are colors as well. Um, they're translucent, so they still look like a shad, but they're not solid white like this. One color that you wanna have around the spawn, this is gonna be a little bonus color. Um, I very, very rarely throw this. Only around the spawn and sometimes around smallmouth is gonna be straight up bubblegum pink. Um, I more use this to find the beds themselves. 
I'll actually twitch it around up shallow. They'll come up and try and eat it, but they won't actually eat the bait. But usually that male will come up and show itself to try and eat the bait coming over its bed. And then you can go up there and see that the bed is right there. Um, a better one that I like to fish around the spawn, um, watermelon. Watermelon red, watermelon seed, either one like that. Um, those are both right there. Green pumpkin even works. Anything like that color. It imitates bluegills so well. If you fish in a pond, baby bass, watermelon red, green pumpkin types of baits like that, those will kill it pond fishing as well as around the spawn on pretty much any lake. They hate bluegills that time of year and these imitate bluegills so well. Let me give you one last bonus tip on how to get some baits in bulk. So when you buy a Zoom Super Fluke, you get 10 to a pack on the regular size, and that's the one I fish the most. I fish the regular size Zoom Super Fluke 99% of the time. You only get 10 in a pack and they're like five bucks. So let me show you a quick tip here. There's a website, it's called Bitters, Baits, and Tackle. Um, if you live in Florida, they also have them there. The actual store is there. You can go in and get them. They sell more than just flukes, but we're gonna show you just the flukes today. In some later videos, I'll show you some of their other baits as well. Um, Right here, this is what I'm talking about. So, Bitters Baits, I'll hold that up close if you wanna check that out. I'll link them down in the description as well. This bag right here is like 100 to 120 flukes, I can't remember the number, $30. So, if you spent $30 on flukes in the store from Zoom, it would be 60 flukes or so. You get double the amount by buying them at Bitters here for these bulk bags. Um, they have all the colors that Zoom has for the most part. They might miss one or two, but they have over 200 colors that they can make. So they might have something that Zoom doesn't even have that you would like in a fluke and it would work even better because not a lot of people are throwing it. Um, they also sell small bags as well. They're two for six bucks. And I would forget how many come in a pack on the, the smaller ones. I just buy them in bulk because I use them so much. Um, I buy a couple of my staple colors that I use all the time and then just burn through these big packs whenever I go. Um, but that's a tip. All their bulk plastics are $30. You save a ton of money doing that. So if you wanna check them out, Bitters is where to go. I am not sponsored by them. I'm just saying this because it is a tip that I like to use. I love their baits. I've been using them for a while. So if you wanna go check them out, go ahead. What? Okay, so I was trying to do a video on how to fish a fluke. My card wasn't working, so this was literally just laying out there on the bottom while I was trying to figure out my SD card on my GoPro and I caught a fish. So that's how you fish a fluke. The end, just kidding. Uh, we're actually gonna talk about how to fish a fluke now, but let me get a weight on this guy. We'll let her go and we'll talk about the real way to fish a fluke. So we talked about three different rigs that you can use for a fluke. Um, today, I'm just using a regular Texas rig. I prefer this when I can get away with it. I know we talked about the open hooked model um, to land more fish, but I prefer this one when I can get away with it just because you have a bigger hook in there. Um, tend to land more fish than having that smaller hook, especially if you hook a bigger bass. Uh, going with watermelon red, fishing some pretty clear water today. Uh, I won't be using the weighted model. I might, I might show you how to fish the um, open hook model, but it's gonna be the same across all three varieties. Um, I won't be using the weighted one today though because we're fishing very shallow water, like four foot deep. Um, so they'll see this fluke and they'll have no problem coming to get it. So, very simple on how to fish a fluke. Um, you can fish it around docks, you can fish it around grass, rocks, pretty much anything you want. All you do is cast it up next to whatever you want. You can let it sink a little bit if you want to. And then whenever you want, you, I mean, you fish it just like a jerk bait, give it a couple twitches on slack line to make that bait dart left and right. Um, and then give it a pause and they'll usually come up and crack it on the pause whenever you let it sit there. And then when you go to twitch it again, they'll be on there. The fluke works exceptionally well around grass and docks and even wood too. Um, the reason it works so good on those types of cover is because you get the same action of a regular jerk bait except you can fish it through 
a lot thicker cover than you could a treble hook jerkbait. And you can often get some bites. It, that jerkbait action is just hard for a bass to resist. So you can often get some more bites by throwing this fluke around up shallow, especially around the spawn, pre-spawn, that time of year. Um, the fluke is a deadly bait to throw when they're up there cruising the shallows and stuff like that. A lot of times if you see a fish cruising shallow um, during the spawn, the one of the only baits I've ever been able to get those fish to eat is actually a fluke um, or the big ones that suspend under the docks, the big females. I've really only ever been able to get those fish to eat a fluke. Um, so that's one that I throw very often. That was beautiful. There's one on the fluke. Skipped it right up under that dock and he couldn't resist it. In the pre-spawn, a lot of these fish will get even closer to the spawn. They'll get up under these docks and just hang out there waiting to spawn. And this fluke is an excellent bait. Just like that, right in the top of the mouth. Fluke is an excellent bait to fish around these docks right now imitates those little bluegills that are up there swimming around and that's exactly what he thought that was and he crushed it and as you can see had no issue bringing him in um, I only go to that single hook wacky rigged hook one that I was talking about in the beginning of this video I only go to that um, when I'm losing a lot of fish continuously and I would go to that single hooked rig um, but right now, I mean, he's ready to eat. That's all he wants to do. He'll fit that whole worm in his mouth, th that fluke. He'll eat it just fine and you can get the hook in him. And you have a better chance landing him with that bigger hook because then you can get him hooked behind the jawbone here and they stay on a lot better. So we're going to let him go and try and get another one. There he goes. I hope you enjoyed today's video talking all about how to fish a Zoom Super Fluke. It's one of my favorite baits that I throw for bass. Throw it almost all year round. It's one of the first baits I ever threw for bass. So if you're new and getting into fishing, definitely get you some Zoom Super Flukes. Get out there, local ponds, local lakes, give it a shot. You'll catch a ton of fish on it and it's a lot of fun to fish with this bait. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more of my fishing tips or videos. Thanks for watching.